can't hear you. <laughs> I hope you're well anyway. It's another uh, another installment today. And first, I just want to say uh, just say hello and thank you to everybody that's uh, subscribed recently. I haven't said hello to you for, for a while in the past few videos, so I just wanted to say hello now because it's still still to this day I've been doing this like 12 months now and it still uh, still blows my mind. <laughs> It really does. I'm just uh, a tractor driver with a camera, and uh, yeah, and you guys, uh, well, the majority of you seem to uh, seem to like what I'm doing. There's a few exceptions, but well, there always will be. And uh, yeah, it's just really uh, humbling. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> moving on. Right. So moving on then. So you can see we are on the mighty 1050 again today. I'm doing my little walk around like I always do. I'd just like to show you what I'm actually doing. Um, and she's looking absolutely fantastic. And uh, I gave her a really quick wash last night. Really quick wash. Just spin you around to me. I bought some new cleaner. It's uh, from Crow Northwest, which um, I shall explain. Everyone keeps asking me about the bottles inside the cab. I shall explain that in this in this video <laughs> at some point. Bought some new cleaner and it's and I'm not sponsored by Chrome either, so this isn't me sponsoring pushing products your way or anything like that. This is just me telling you what I used to clean my tractor. <laughs> it's their premium TFR with wax. And I tell you what, I, I, I quickly quickly give it a light coat with this TFR last night and it was dark. And then blasted all, all the, the, the soil and muck off with the jet wash. And then give it just another coat of this TFR and wax. And then, and then blasted it off. And I, I haven't I normally use a sponge. I haven't even used a sponge this time. I, I ain't touched it. <laughs> I haven't physically touched the tractor. And and it looks like that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend that. that Crow, Crow Northwest. Look at the website, premium TFR and wax. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> right then, enough, enough of me uh, plugging products that I'm not even sponsored by. <laughs> um, so we've got the 12 meter Catros discs on. You've seen these a lot um, in my videos. And I'd quite like you to maybe uh, suggest some uh, suggestions. Yeah, that makes sense. Suggest some suggestions about what you'd like to see with regards to these discs because I've done I've covered them quite a bit and to be honest I do use them a lot and I don't want you guys to get bored of it I don't want to be the same thing same thing all the time so if you could like maybe just give me some suggestions on what sort of things you'd like to see with the discs and um, what you'd like me to show you um, any more controls that I maybe haven't covered or boring things like grease in it or <laughs> look at that tractor i can't get over it how shiny it is so it's the first time i've been in the field well the the, the, the team has been in muck spreading we've got fi a five-man team over in that direction somewhere we've got three muck spreaders a bunning a k2 and a roland and two uh manny twos loading and the, i've already done about 100 acres this morning over in that direction i've just come into this field now and it's about my dinner time so i thought i'd show you show you what, what i'm doing so this is the first time this field's been touched in about six months and you can see everything started to break down nicely and then there's just a fine coating of manure across the top and i'm only just chipping just chipping it in we're not going very deep at all just chipping chipping the top incorporating the muck incorporating this all the greenery that's in the field just increasing that organic matter in the soil to keep the soil nice and healthy and as you can see as i like to do we are very lucky to have some nice soil you know it's nice and friable it's uh yeah some good soil there. right so that's enough of me waffling on again we'll uh climb up into the cab and i'll try and think of something to show you or something to do <laughs> Yeah. Right, we're in the cap. Look at that bonnet. Look at that shiny bonnet. I've been peppered by a couple of seagulls this morning, which ain't great. <laughs> but uh, it's still shining. <laughs> so settings, so basically, 
got a disc on it's, it's like a semi mounted jobby so it's on the lower links of the three point linkage <clears throat> so I set I don't set the depth with the linkage it needs to float a little bit There's, when this is running everything is in float the wings are in float and the uh, the uh, drawbar at the front is in float and it just allows it to contour to the ground so if you've some of you have maybe used a set of discs that are rigid that don't float and if you have any hollers or little you know little low spots in the field the discs will tend to skittle across and miss bits where these discs don't these these really do catch everything they don't really miss don't really miss anything because they, they contour to the ground so well so the uh, the drawbar is in float on that ram that you can maybe see down there and that's what we use to lift it up when we're turning and the discs will lift up as well so everything just goes onto the roller at the back and we're turning and then we drop them in again when we start the next the next pass so this is my hydraulics down here so you can see the blue's in float which is the wings and the green is in float which is the drawbar <coughs> Um, and I'm doing 14k that's my ground speed at the minute that does change sometimes it'll be a little bit faster sometimes it'll be a little bit slower 14k is a nice a nice speed the discs don't bounce around a lot and uh, yeah yeah and we're all we're all good with that so the uh, GPS the settings in the GPS that I've got for the discs so I have got a slight offset on the disc because all the discs at the front face one way then they're cut into the cutting into non turned over ground they're cutting into you know ground that's more stiff they tend to steer the discs a little bit because the, the discs at the back that face the opposite way are going into soil that's already been loosened by the front discs so it does tend to just pull it one way slightly so right first thing then so i mean feel so you, you you've some of you have seen this loads and loads of times before and i'm going through this for the for the people that haven't <laughs> i'm so sorry if this is boring you just get those suggestions in for me to see what you know so i know you want to see with these discs right so let's get going then so i'm in stick mode so i control my speed with that there we are and i've got me uh, up and down set on my green spool and i can pro i can program this this one to do anything i want in fact you can program any of them to do anything you want but i've got the green spool and this is colored green <laughs> so i've kept everything nice and simple you could have that as the purple spool and that as yeah anyway yeah <laughs> you get the picture <laughs> So to, to lower it into the ground, I press and hold the minus, which is that one. So I press the top bit and then it lowers the discs into the ground. So the, the, the rams will lift up and that will bring the linkage of the discs into work. What it does, it also brings the drawbar up, but we don't run, run it pressurized because we want it to contour. So we want it in float. So that's this button here. So I press that button there to go into float. It's now on the screen there, I've got two squiggly lines, so it means my wings are in float and my me, uh, me drawbar's in float, and so are the discs. So that's all ready to, to start working. So the drawbars, the, the ram on the drawbar's got a bit of giving it now, so it can float up and down over the contours. The, the wings have got no pressure in. So the wings can can fold and do whatever they like to make sure they follow the ground contours as well. So I've got my cruise speed set. Now I mentioned earlier on about it being 14k. I've moved into this field and this the land in this in here is a little bit fluffier. So I've had to back my speed off a little bit. So you can sort of imagine if you if you've never done any cultivation or anything before and, and you ask someone how fast should I disc or how fast should I do this how fast should I do that it's a bit like how long is a piece of string you have you have a, a, a basic all the machines will have like a, a, a range of speeds that they'll, they'll they'll be happy working at from like from the manufacturers they'll sort of say you know this is what speed you can work out but in reality it doesn't quite work out like that it works out a bit different because it just depends on so many things it just depends if there's a lot of rubbish 
if the soil's fluffy or if the soil's hard or it, there's, there's loads of things that that can change the speed so in in other fields i was doing about 14k if i was just on fresh sort of neat stubble um, on some fairly strongish strongish land or at least some land with some body to it i'd be up at like 16k but in here this land is 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 quite light it's really quite light and there's a fair old bit of uh, greenery in it and what can happen there's not that much resistance in the soil so because there's not that much resistance the discs don't turn as easily because they're, they're not biting as hard into the ground and with all the rubbish having to flow through it it can it can bung it up so if you go too fast the the, the soil flowing through the machine it can't it can't flow through the discs quick enough if you understand so you're you're if you're going too fast the soil gets held back and, and held back because it can't escape quicker than you're going and then it starts bunging up and you start pulling soil with you and then you'll the machine will start sinking down and sinking down and you'll end up with making big troughs and bunging up and making a hump that's difficult to get rid of so it's always always best to just just play about with your speed and find find sort of a happy medium and i've found in here now 12 k is as, as fast as i can go where i can be like productive if if you understand where I could maybe go a little bit faster but there'd be patches where I'd have to slow down maybe lift up a bit because it's starting to bung up and so if I can just have a, a, a speed where I can just keep going up and down I'll get more done so uh, that's uh, yeah it's working out okay so I'll slow down a bit so I'll tap the plus button twice and then hold the plus button to lift up so it pushes the ram extends the ram on the drawbar extends the ram on the discs to lift them out the ground and then I'll get turned around into the next run and I'll push me minus to lower it into the ground uh, I'll just pressure it a little bit so all the accumulators get the right the right amount of pressure in so it's even then I'll let go of it and then I'll press the float so now everything's in float again and it'll contour to the ground now I'll speed up so I'll flick the stick to the right and, the, and, it's, uh, and we'll get to, get to 12k now the reason I put when we got to the end, the reason I pushed the plus twice is because because it's in float, I push it once to cancel the float and then I hold it again to, to start lifting it up. You can just press and hold it and it will take the float off, but it's not quite as quick. So I just give it two two hits and uh, and, and we're away. Uh, so we're a little bit deep actually in this field. It's uh, it's a bit fluffier than where it was before, so I need to adjust the depth. Right, so <coughs> with these shims, there's four lots of these to do. So there's a nice pin through there. I do hope you can see this because it's so hard to tell where right, GoPro's facing. Let me just have a. I reckon, I reckon you can see. I reckon you can see. So we've got these so many shims in here now. I think there's seven. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? No, there's eight. There's eight. So I want to shallow it up a bit. So I'm going to put another three shims in. So all I do is just spin these round, put them underneath the ram, like that, and bring that hole back in line with others, get the pin, give it a wiggle, which is in, and that's adjusted the depth on that one.
this I think this is going to be uh, a real short one <laughs> this time a really short one it's really I just want to I just want you to, to make some suggestions really because I do an awful lot of, of cultivation um, I don't want you to get get fed up <laughs> of it but I also want to keep you know keep the rhythm going with the videos because I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to re release one every Tuesday I'm trying um, the past few weeks I've managed it um, but I just I'd, I'd quite like to be a bit more a bit more a bit more regular but um, at the same time I don't want the content to get really rubbish but uh, talking of, of, of content some of you have seen it, some of you might not have seen it. Um, Chris from Pro Horizon did a really good video um, of me on this tractor with these discs on his on his channel. And uh, I'll put a link in the description to the video. And, uh, and it's basically just me with the Catros discs. And, uh, and Chris, um, Chris basically gets some, some drone footage and, and, and stuff like that because I can't, um, I can't use a drone. I, I'd love to have a drone but I haven't got a drone license and uh, we're right next to an international airport, Robin Hood, you know, Doncaster, Robin Hood Airport. And uh, literally when I say right next to it, I mean it's only over there <laughs> to this field. So um, I can't really have a drone unless I get a license and then it's very restrictive because you have to talk to air traffic control and get permission to fly. So really a drone for me is sort of out of the equation. It's just, uh, it's just GoPro. GoPro only, but hopefully uh, I'll be able to get some sort of funky mounts or some some cameras that follow you or something something like that. I don't know. I'm not I'm not I'm not giving up. I'm not just going to only use a GoPro because it's really they're really good. But it's it's always nice to see what's actually happening around as well. There's only so many places I can I can stick a GoPro. You know, I sort of soon sort of run out of places to put one. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah. So just bear, bear with me on that. I might find uh, find something to replace a drone while keeping it at sort of ground level. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you want to see that video, <coughs> I put a link in the description. Bob over to Chris's channel. Um, what's coming up? We've got uh, a couple of new bits of kit uh, arrived on the farm. <coughs> I won't tell you what they are. They're nothing massive and major, but they're certainly good and I like them <laughs> so uh, one's just um, just arrived a couple of days ago so when uh, when we get it on I'll, uh, I'll uh, be doing a video about that uh, what else what else is coming up obviously I'll be starting the spring drilling campaign with the new drill the new 12 meter sit down drill which you saw in the spring uh, you saw the the one we had on demo Obviously now we've got the one that we uh, we actually own with all the fancy uh, the fancy uh, rocket sensors, GPS section control, and all of that nice stuff. <laughs> so um, yeah, I may believe here that because I've waffled on a bit. So thank you ever so much for watching. Again, thank you to all the new subscribers. Please don't think every video is going to be like this because. Uh, it's not, this is just a, it's more of an update, just asking for suggestions. And I've mentioned that ten times already, so be quiet, Tommy. Be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah. So thank you all for uh, watching, thank you for subscribing, and just thank you in general. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I'll catch you all on the other side. Uh, see you soon. Tuesday, next Tuesday. Yes. Right then, so I said I'd do it, and a lot of people have asked. These are me, these bottles. You know, a lot of people have been asking what's what's hanging up, what's all the bottles for. Now these are from Crow Northwest as well, and uh, I got like an interior cleaning package. So you get um, hang that back properly. You get like a bundle of stuff. So you get those bottles. You get um, some microfiber cloths, and you get this little brush as well for getting in between all the nooks and crannies look which I like which I really like it's a really nice handy feature that stop Johnny stop got to stop 
<laughs> so this one here, this green one, that's a fabric cleaner, so it cleans upholstery and carpets. So if I spill something on the carpet in here, I can clean it off, or the seat, or the headlining. Um, the next one is Pink, and that's their most famous product. Pink is like a cleaner and, and, a, and a dresser, and it smells absolutely divine, and the job it does is fantastic. It cleans anything, and it leaves this shiny, shiny finish, this lovely, glossy, shiny finish without being sticky. It's fantastic, brilliant. And then we've got this Mega Cleaner here. Mega Clean is... is does what it says it is really if you've got any really stubborn mud marks or anything it literally melts it instantly it's gone it, it's fantastic stuff yeah you start with that so with the mega clean and it all drips off and it's brilliant and you clean that and then you put the pink on and it's like new again <laughs> then you got the cool fresh there which is just an air freshener smells like those black uh, trees you get that you hang up and then I've got a window and glass cleaner there and then that's an auto glim um, tyre dresser but I use that for the plastics on the outside just every now and again give the plastics a coat to keep them black because they can the black plastics can tend to like go like a grey white colour so I just yeah give them a, give them a good coat with that every now and again so yeah that's the cleaning products <laughs> sorry if that's bored you but a lot of people asked <laughs>